It came from my mother when I was a child who would take me on little nature walks as a toddler and talk about you know, the streams and the birds and bees and all kinds of things like that. And that generated kind of a passion and a, a real interest. And that continued through most of my career. This land is in a kind of transition zone between the boreal forest and the more uh, parkland. Um, so the species are interesting. And in another spot, there's really massive, twisted, ancient willows. It's yeah. just really, really interesting uh, awesome. piece of land. Back in 96, Edmonton was losing its natural areas at about 16% a year, which is massive. Lots of people felt we are losing our natural areas in the city of Edmonton as well as around the city. They were looking for a land trust which conserves natural areas to play a part in helping to conserve lands for people, for wildlife, uh, so that we can have areas to recreate, to have a sense of spiritual renewal. So the city of Edmonton and five other organizations got together and said, let's try to create an organization which can work on this. Hearing a robin up ahead here, I don't see exactly where it is right now. Birds are very good at, at hiding, uh, but uh, it's always wonderful to hear the wildlife that's enjoying this area. So the, the robins are uh, a migrating species that only comes here to breed in the, in the spring. And the chickadees are um, birds that overwinter here and actually are able to put up with uh, the cold winters we get. So these areas are really wonderful for supporting both these different types of, of wildlife. So we currently take care of 12 conservation lands. Uh, two of which are conservation easements and uh, 10 of which we actually own the land. Uh, there's a little bit of differences in how we treat those different areas, uh, but we do want to protect all of them forever into the future. We have a surprising number of landowners who come to us who say, can you help conserve the land? In fact, we can't uh, take over all the lands that, are, uh, that we're approached about. Um, there is a federal program which helps landowners benefit if they donate land or a conservation easement and they have a financial benefit uh, against their taxes to the value of what they donate. So that's really helpful. So people pop up from every municipality with an interest in conservation. Quite lovely. So the bees uh, could use any of these openings and uh, just depends on what size the bee is. It's so neat to see that these paper straws also have a few there. That's very neat, but they do like the wood the best. We look after the land in perpetuity. So we need to come out and look after trails. We need to look after our nest boxes. We need to remove old barbed wire that um, is left over from our agricultural past. Uh, we need to do cutting of bush. Um, there's many things and of course the big one is weeds. Invasive weeds and other weeds are a constant um, source of volunteer time and we do that every year. Even the little guys. Oh, no. oh yeah, you've got some right over here. That is uh, one of our major challenges, uh, but we do quite a lot of other things, uh, including putting up nest boxes for birds, uh, or putting up bee hotels for solitary bees, or bat boxes for bats. So there's quite a variety of different things we do to help provide some extra homes for wildlife to live in. So we're looking for a geocache right now. Uh, one of the things that we like to do is have people come out and get to interact with our lands and uh, experience nature for themselves. So the clue for ours is who goes there. So right in this area, there's an owl nest box and right here is our geocache. So the idea is that people can come out and uh, sort of go on almost on a treasure hunt. 
Well, one of the things that we've begun to do over the last uh, number of years is projects to help the public do their part. We are responsible for massive areas of land. I mean, almost 2,500 acres. Uh, but people can do things in their backyards. They can put up bee hotels. Um, they may even put up bat boxes. They can plant species that are helpful for the wildlife. Um, so we've been doing a number of educational workshops and giving people tools on our website for how they can play their part. And I think that has really encouraged the public and helped them see we all have a part to do. Conservation is important all over the province. Uh, however, this region is particularly challenged because it's the most fragmented ecoregion in Alberta with the highest population pressures on top of that. So large chunks of natural area are rare and really special.